Jonathan Greenblatt, chief executive of the Anti-Defamation League, didn't mince words about the media when he appeared on Morning Joe. I love this show and I love this network, but I've got to ask who is writing the scripts? Hamas, the people who did this, they are not fighters, Jonathan. They are not militants and I'm looking right at the camera. They are terrorists. And joining us now from New York is the ADL's Jonathan Greenblatt. You really let MSNBC have it. Who's writing the scripts? Why? Well, look, this is a war, like you said, but it's not a war that Israel started. It's not a war with two equivalent sides. And this false equivalency, referring to the individuals from Hamas as combatants or fighters or militants, they are terrorists. They are barbarians. And for the American people to understand what at stake, just like we talked about al-Qaeda and ISIS, we've got to put Hamas in the right context. This wasn't an attack, Howard. It was a massacre. Mm -hmm. The Israelis are not retaliating. They're, in, they're responding with a defensive measure. And frankly, the organization occupying Gaza is not Israel. It's Hamas. The Hamas is the most anti-Palestinian group in the world. It's a terror organization that's moved the Palestinian people farther from their national aspirations than any other organization in right. their history. And in many cases, using them as human shields. Now, I've been surprised by some of the liberal rallies on the campuses of some of the nation's top schools and elsewhere, uh, not just supporting the Palestinian people, but celebrating the brutal attacks on Israel of last weekend. Do you find that troubling? Yeah, look, I wouldn't call them liberal. I'd call them loathsome. <laughs> Anyone who thinks that uh, decolonization involves decapitation should have their own head examined, Howard. There's nothing progressive about Islamic fascism. There's nothing liberal about burning babies in their cribs. Rape is not resistance. So these large scale rallies, these are essentially pro Hamas demonstrations. Now it's possible that some of the people involved might not realize it. It's possible that some of the people involved are showing up because they care, and I get that, but literally, I mean, if you think that there's apartheid in Gaza where there are no Israelis, if you think that by any means necessary means, you know, a, murdering children in front of their parents, murdering parents in front of their children, mm -hmm. seizing toddlers as hostages, it is a deranged mentality. But this is what we need to focus on, Howard, because it is the dehumanization of Israelis. It is the demonization of Jews that creates the conditions in which people can believe these lies, and they're dangerous. We track anti-Semitism. We've seen an explosion of anti-Semitic incidents. In the past week alone in America, Howard, we've had a, an increase of almost 300 percent reported incidents versus the same time last year. All right. That's it, indeed, that's, I got to jump in here. That's indeed uh, troubling. And I've also said every news organization should you do or a terrorist. But there's no question that Hamas launched this war with a series of atrocities and massacres that shocked the world's conscience. But yeah. there is growing criticism, as you know, of Israel for not just the bombing, but for ordering one million Hamas civilians, excuse me, uh, Gaza civilians to move from the north to the south. There are shortages there of food, of fuel. Many don't have shelter. Don't you worry that world opinion will turn against the Israelis? Well, I certainly worry about world opinion turning against the Israelis. And I certainly wish the Israelis didn't have to undertake such a massive exercise of force. But the truth is, Howard, this could end today. It could be stopped if the Hamas would give up the hostages and say they were going to put down their arms and work out a means to live in peace with Israel. The organization with the power to stop this is Hamas. This is Hamas's war. They started it. Hamas can finish it by returning the hostages. They can finish it by laying down their arms. So who's responsible for displacing these Palestinians? Hamas. Who's responsible for the pain and suffering in Gaza? Hamas. It started with Hamas, but it will be finished by Israel if Hamas doesn't do the right thing. All right. I've got a little more than a minute. Let me ask you this. If we are to grieve for the killing and wounding of innocent Israeli children and babies, as of course we should, yes. shouldn't we have the same sympathy for innocent children and babies in Gaza? We should have the same sympathy. Every life is a world. Every life taken is a world destroyed. 
Innocent Israelis were butchered last weekend. Innocent Palestinians certainly will suffer as well. But so then the question becomes, who's accountable for their suffering? Hamas. Who's responsible for the situation? Hamas. Who could end this thing today if they return the hostages and lay down their arms? Hamas. But well, what are the people of Gaza supposed to do? Hamas is a dictatorship uh, with plenty of arms. Uh, they can't rise up and overthrow Hamas. So that seems unrealistic. Uh, look, I, it's not for me to lay out a geostrategic argument. Okay. But I do know that, that Gaza is bordered by Israel and Egypt. Egypt is as accountable. Egypt is as responsible. So I just think like blaming one side, mm -hmm. drawing false equivalents, false equivalencies, you know, it, it really hurts all of us because it doesn't do the situation justice in terms of what's really happening on the ground. I understand. Jonathan Greenblatt, we really appreciate the chance to talk to you. 